Okay, let's talk about torque. Torque. Um, if you've ever had to, you know, turn a wrench or lift a shovel or make anything twist, you, you've dealt with torque. Because torque is... Um, Torque is to rotational motion, rotational motion, what force is to translational motion, right? If you want to make something move, if you want to change the motion of an object, you've got to apply a force to it. Well, if you want to change the rotational motion of an object, you've got to apply a torque. So that's what we're going to talk about today, torque. Let's talk about the simplest system. I do this in a little different order than the book, so, um, but we get to the same place. So do read the book. This is section... 10.6 and 10.7. I kind of start off with 10.7 and then we get into 10.6. So let's talk about a particle again. Uh, but this time the particle is connected to an axis of rotation by a string. Or it could be, here's my axis of rotation. Here's my object. It's got some kind of mass m. And it's connected to a string. And it's moving in a circle. Whoops. So here's the path. Maybe, it, but let's say it's not uniform circular motion. Maybe this is one of those, uh, uh, this is like a, a toy rocket that you've tied to the end of the string and then you light the rocket. <laughs> That's fun. And, or an airplane or something that you've tied to a string. So it's just going to move in a circle. But what it's got, it's got an R, it's got M. But what I'm going to do, it's, it does have velocity. And because it's tied to this string, the velocity is always perpendicular to uh, the position vector. Here's r. Um, so this is v. But let's say I've got a force that is tangential to the path. Now, of course, this is moving, right? So what kind of force? It's moving in a circle. So what kind of force is there on the object? A centripetal force. But let's say there is also a tangential force, which is going to change the speed. So let's apply a force to it, like this. And I'm going to call that F sub t. Now, what does the sub t stand for? Tangential. It's tangential to the path. Well, F equals ma, right? So I can say that this force is equal uh, this tangential force is equal to m a sub t. Now that what is that? T? That again, that's a tangential acceleration. This is the acceleration that changes the speed, not the direction, of my rotating mass. Okay. Well, uh, this is just one particle. We're going to extend it to many particles here in a minute. But what do we know about tangential acceleration? Let's relate it to angular acceleration alpha how were how was tangential acceleration related to angular acceleration well it was r alpha wasn't it um, so um, what I can do here is uh, make a substitution I can say that the tangential acceleration is equal to the mass times r alpha. OK. Uh, well, this is cool. All right. Now, wow, look at what I got here. I've got m times r. Hmm. m times r. What do I, what do I got that's got an m and an r in it? We were just talking about it. Rotational inertia, or moment of inertia. But it wasn't m times r. What was it? It was m times r squared. Well, this is algebra. And as long as I do one thing to one side and do it to the other side, it's cool. So I'm just, for the heck of it, I'm going to multiply both sides by r. Because I can. <laughs> All right, so r times, so this is r 
times a tangential force is equal to m r squared alpha. Well, what is m r squared? That's i. So this is i alpha. Now, let's think about analogous variables here. This is the rotationally equivalent of mass. This is the rotational equivalent of acceleration. So r times a tangential force is the rotational equivalent of force. It's not the same thing as force, but it's the rotational uh, analogy or equivalent of that. And we have uh, a really cool variable for r, r times a tangential force. And that's called tau. It's a Greek letter. It's a Greek letter T. So just make like a little cursive capital T like thing if you want. Or just, just copy what I wrote there. So a torque, and this is a torque. A torque causes an object with rotational inertia to angularly accelerate. Okay, so now I can extend this to a, now here's for a single particle. Um, and what if I have a collection of particles? Well, what if I make this like a, a uh, some kind of ri rigid little um, massless rod here, and then I have a whole bunch of particles like this. And I, I just add this, and they're all fixed. They're all going to have the same angular acceleration because they're all fixed to the same, uh, you know, they're, they're all glued together by these massless little sticks. Well, I still have the same tangential force, but all I'm doing is adding to my rotational inertia. All I'm doing is making I bigger which means that for the same torque, I'm going to get less angular acceleration. I'm adding to the angular mass of the system by just adding these other particles. Well, what if I turn this into some blobby shape? Well, if I have some blobby shape, instead of adding little particles like this, I'm going to add a little dm. And so, um, but, and I'm going to go through that integral instead of I, well, when I had particles, I was equal to this, the summation of Ri squared uh, Mi. But when I have an extended body, now I've got this little dm here. Well, now I've got this extended body, so I've got to change this to an integral, R squared dm. But it's the same thing in the equation. Okay, now the book goes into a little bit more detail than I did, but um, it's all right. Now, one other thing, what if I had another force acting on here? What if I had a force acting like this? Here's another tangential force. Well, look at what this one, this tangential force is trying to make this system rotate counterclockwise, which we call the positive k-hat direction. This guy is trying to make it turn, twist this way. So what I have to do is add up these two torques. And so now I really get the equivalent of Newton's second law, but for rotating objects. We get the sum I have to add up this torque and this torque. The sum of torques is equal to I alpha. And this is big. This is huge. This equation is very important. I like to call torques a twist. Imagine you got twists, a lot of different things trying to twist an object, make it rotate. You add them all together, you get the net 
torque, or the net twisting force. And that will be equal to the rotational inertia times the angular acceleration of the object. And this is directly analogous to when I sum the forces on object will be equal to ma. Now, are these vectors? Oh, sorry. Are these vectors here? Um, well, these are vectors. Remember that what we're talking about here, these do have an orientation in space. That is, they have an axis of rotation. And we can say here in this little system, if I call this you know, the x direction and this the y direction, well, then you know, the, the z direction is going to be towards the camera here or up. And so the, 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 what we're doing when we put a vector hat on here is we're identifying the orientation of the axis of rotation in three-dimensional space. Okay. Now, this is kind of what we what the book does in section 10.7. Let's go to 10.6 and look at a real object that's got forces on it. Okay, let's imagine a wrench that's, um, well, let's not do that. It's, uh, it's too hard to draw that. Um, I'm just going to imagine a, a, a stick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the stick down. Oh, wait, only about seven minutes left, so hang on and keep thinking. I'm going to pin it down like this. And this is a little shape we're going to, you're going to see a lot. We're going to pin this thing down. So imagine a stick that's got a pin in it right here. So what does this do? This allows the stick to rotate, but you can't translate. So it's anchored down here. So it's like I take my pencil and I'm going to pin it to the table like this. So it's free to rotate around like this, but I can't, I can't move it to the side because it's anchored down. So this is how we restrict the motion. It's got this degree of freedom. It has one degree of freedom. It can, it can move around like this. Okay. So. Now I'm going to put a force on it, like this. So here's my force. Now, this stick has a rotational inertia, right? It's got mass. Its mass is distributed all over this. If, not, let's neglect gravity for right now, because I just want to keep it to one force. Um, so. Um, this force is going to try to make this thing rotate, right? Yes. But only a component of the force is going to try to make it rotate. Because let's break this force into two components. Now here's R. When I'm calculating a torque, what is R? R is the distance R is the distance from my axis of rotation to where the force is applied to my object. Force, obviously that's, that's how big the force is, but look at this. Let's break this force into components. It's got a component that's along the direction of R, and it's got a component, I'll draw it like this, but I can pick it up and place it over here because that's where it's actually applied. This is a force that is perpendicular to R. And I'm going to give this angle phi. For some reason, in physics, we, we call this phi, not theta. It doesn't matter if you use a theta, it still works. Um, and so here's what I want you to see. Only this component of the force placed over here, where it's actually applied, is trying to make it twist or rotate. Does that make sense to everybody? Only this component of the force is trying to make it rotate. So what is the torque on this object from this force? Well, the torque due to this force 
is equal to R times the twisting component of the force. The component of the force that's perpendicular. Also, if you want to think, this is going to travel on a path, isn't it? It's going to make it try to follow a circular path. This spot is going to try to follow. So this, for, this is the tangential force we were just talking about. This component of the force is tangential. So I'm going to say, well, it's the, the total force, F, times the what? I want this component, the sine of phi. OK? So if you have a force applied to an object, and you want to know what is the torque that that force is applying to the object, Figure out where your axis of rotation is. Figure out your distance away um, where the force is being applied. That'll be your R. Multiply that by the magnitude of your force. And then multiply uh, by the sine of the angle that R and F make if you were put up to put them tail to tail. Now, some of you who've had a little more advanced math than others, uh, I think in Math 6 you cover this. What is the magnitude of one vector? This is a vector, isn't it? A position vector. Magnitude of another vector times the sine of the angle between them. Anybody know what that's called? It's not a dot product. Dot product would be cosine. This would be a cross product. OK? And this torque has a direction, doesn't it? The direction of this torque, and really what we're doing when we say the direction of the torque <laughs> is we are identifying the orientation of the axis of rotation in three-dimensional space is go, go from R. Let me zoom as far out as I can get here. You go, ooh, look at that. All right. You go. You go from R over to F. My thumb points in the direction of the axis of rotation. Yes? Can we just cross R and F now? Yes, exactly what you're doing. Can we actually cross you guys can do it. We're, we're all going to be doing it in the next assignment. Wait, we wanted to do cross product in the next Yes. Woo! OK, now, and don't worry, if you haven't, if you're not in that six, if you're merely an AP calculus, um, one of those, you know, poor lowly people. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. Um, uh, it's it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. So we're gonna and I'm gonna we're gonna do it as if you've never seen it before. So, um, okay, I've run out of time. There is a an example to go through where you have two different forces act, uh, applying a torque. To an object, so you just add those torques together to figure out the net torque, and then you apply that to, um, you know, the net torque equals I alpha, and you've got it. Okay, that's it.